I am Brian Gardner. I'm a developer advocate here at WP Engine, and welcome to uh, today's workshop. We're going to explore color and WordPress block themes. And when I say color, uh, I'm referring very specifically to the color palette, uh, gradients, duotone filters, and style variations, four different elements of uh, modern WordPress and uh, full site editing that uh, make up color. And uh, believe it or not, I'm historically a person who's lived in black and white in the monochrome of of life. Uh, and so just within the last several months, I've really dialed in my um, my love for color. And so here we are today. I'm going to go ahead and close out of that and start this off. So again, this is going to be a very casual walkthrough. I'm going to just talk through um, and Damon is here with us. He's also part of the WP Engine uh, developer relations team. And I'm going to go through each section. Instead of just waiting to the end for questions, we're just going to kind of talk throughout uh, so that way we don't miss anything. So I know we've we've got a small subset of folks here. Uh, some of this stuff may or may not make sense to you. And so uh, I just want to make sure there's plenty of time for interaction. So inside of ThemeJSON, we're going to talk about colors. So this is block themes with WordPress. And inside of theme JSON, there's there's lots you can do. Uh, you can style blocks, you can add custom CSS, but today specifically we're going to talk about color. And so what we're seeing here is sort of like a condensed code view of theme JSON, sort of hyper focused on uh, the color aspects. And we're going to walk through each one of these settings and just visually go back and forth. I'm going to go into my screen uh, and show people like what this does and and what this and how this all works. So Starting with just colors in general uh, in the color settings and theme JSON, there are six settings here. We'll go through each one, but here's sort of an overview. Uh, and by default, I believe they are um, set to true and you have to turn them off at, by submitting false. So in other words, if you don't have this at all, one of these lines, then they're just it's gonna be enabled. Uh, and so I've just got them enabled here by the true uh, just to kind of make things easier to understand. So the first one, we're going to break this down even more, is the custom color settings within WordPress. And so what this does, setting this to true or or not marking it as false, it enables custom colors in the editor. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into sort of a sample page here um, and show what exactly that is. So when you go edit a color or go to add a color, this block here at the top, uh, it's transparent by default. This is sort of just the uh, whatever the theme color is, that set to true enables this custom colors. And if you click that, it basically pops open this modal, which allows you to use any hex code you want. Uh, so you're not limited to a theme color. You're not limited to the WordPress core colors. So you could literally type in anything you want. And you've then changed the color. So I'm going to uh, undo that. And I'm going to go into my code editor. Let me make this a little bit bigger. And uh, one second, I popped open the wrong frost file. Uh, da, 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 da. I need to go to my local install so I can control exactly what we're looking at. OK. So I'm going to highlight again where we were at. We were at these these six here. And so right now we've got custom set to true. I'm going to change this to false. And then I'm going to save the file. I'm going to refresh my screen, and then we're going to see what happens. So now if I go to text, you'll see that little thing was gone. So as builders and things that we want to turn over to our clients, if you want to disable their ability to change the color at that level, you can just set that to false. And so that gets rid of the ability to do the custom color. I'm going to go back here, set that back to true so it shows back up. So that's what the custom color setting does. Uh, similarly, custom duo tone allows you to set true or false, whether or not you want to allow people to go in and edit duo tone filters that are applied to images. So for an example, and this is why we're joined by our friend Taylor Swift, if you go here, if you select the image and then click this little triangle, this is the duo tone filters. Right here, you can see shadows and highlights. And this allows you to um, pick the duo tone. Oops, excuse me. So if you wanted to change the way that looks, 
uh, you're able to just do that on a custom level. I'm going to close out of here, custom duo tone. And then similarly, we have custom gradients, which again, setting to true makes custom gradients available in the editor. Uh, to showcase what that looks like, I'm going to go here to the background of this paragraph, and then I'm going to select gradient. And you can see up here, this little section uh, allows you to go in and customize the gradient as you see fit. And of course, if we go to custom gradient, set that to false, I'm going to refresh my screen. And we go to gradient, that option is no longer available. So that is how you can turn it off and minimize. And this is something we're asked often, how do I help minimize, you know, the damage that can be done after turning something over to a client, right? And so that is uh, setting these to false would be ways of doing that. Now, the next thing we have for colors, and I'm going to go through these six, and then we'll take a quick break and we can do colors, uh, is the default duo tones. And this is when we see the word default, we're talking about WordPress core uh, sort of pre-selects a, a handful of different colors, gradients, and duotone filters, sort of like an opinionated version. And so the default duotone, uh, going back to the Taylor Swift photo, um, would be these down here. These, I think, what is it, six or seven or eight or something like that. So WordPress says, hey, we think these are some cool ways. They're basically just arbitrary color schemes that might be of interest to people who want to just do things. And so um, if we go to default duo tone and set this to false uh, and we go back to the photo and try to apply the duo tone, those are now gone. Default gradients are the same way. Uh, if you uh, go here and go to background, you can see these down here, these are the default, these are the WordPress core gradients. So these are registered by WordPress itself. They're the ones who opinionated this color scheme. And if you said, yeah, that's great, uh, but we don't wanna show that to either our clients or people buying our products, uh, you can set that to false. I will show what that does. They're now gone. Uh, most of my themes, because I, uh, Frost being an example of them, uh, I like to sort of just set the options I want people to use. And so by default, I generally turn all of these off. Uh, I allow the custom, but the WordPress core ones I turn off because it doesn't jive with my color scheme. And it just adds sort of a paradox of choice for people. And so we, I remove those. Uh, the default color palette, similarly, as we go to the next slide, um, setting that to false or true enables or disables it. And what that looks like is going in and editing. This is the default palette, these um, 12 colors that WordPress itself has selected. So again, setting this to false results in something that looks like this. That's now gone. And that looks a lot better, especially if it's, you know, some client stuff that you want. Um, them to choose from. Okay, let's take a break there. Uh, I see some questions down in the chat. I'm gonna, um, let's see, can I pop over? Okay, I'm gonna do this. We're gonna, so the people who are watching the uh, replay will also be able to uh, uh, see the answers. So if you do a child theme of Frost, are these settings in the theme JSON file or do we need to add them? Um, you can do them in either. if. Uh, generally speaking, a child themes overrides the parent theme. So it would kind of make sense to not have the settings twice because you would essentially be turning it off twice. In other words, if you turn it off in like Frost or a parent theme, you don't need to turn it off again in the child theme. Um, and if you set it true in Frost, or maybe, maybe let's just say, for example, Frost has everything enabled. Um, that was a design choice that maybe I made or somebody else's theme that you're using However, you want to build a child theme because you want to save the customizations and not affect the files of the main theme. But you yourself, in your instance, maybe for a client, you want to turn them off. You can do that then in the child theme. So whatever the parent theme has will get overwritten by the child theme. So if the parent theme has everything set to true and you're like, I don't want custom gradients or custom colors 
or custom duo tones, you can then go into your child theme, theme JSON file and set everything to false. And then that will trump the parent theme. Uh, and Jeremy very elegantly uh, ex uh, explained the same thing. Uh, so, okay, Elisa, what if someone adds a pattern from somewhere else? Can you change a color there? Uh, yes, my guess is um, that's an interesting question. Like if you went to the WordPress repository and you downloaded a pattern or copied a pattern and inserted it, and it, with that copy and paste, brought the hex code over. But if you have custom uh, WordPress core color turned off, um, not well, no, WordPress, the custom colors turned off. I don't know if you would actually be able to edit that color at that point. Uh, you might be able to select the theme color to, to change it if the theme color was available, uh, or if you left WordPress core default colors open. But if you turn off the custom, and I, I could probably make the argument that you never should, um, just because you always want the ability to go in and like make a color a color if you want it. Um, that's a good experiment. I'll have to try that one. I'll let you know tomorrow, Elisa, uh, or we could try it live tomorrow in build mode. That's a good question. Um, any other questions? Uh, feel free to use the chat if I've gone and glossed over anything. I believe I've got everything here, right? All right, so moving on, we're going to do uh, what's just defining the core color palette. Uh, not the core color palette, the, 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 cu the custom color palette, I guess, uh, for the theme. And so similarly in theme JSON, you can set what's called the palette. And what I'll do is go in and you can see I'm using Frost. So Frost is active on this theme. I actually have the purple style variation chosen. So what we're looking at will be purple colors and not the blue that's default. And that's sort of by, by choice. Um, but inside of theme JSON, you can set your own palette. You can say, I want my theme to say, uh, I want it to register like white and black, and you can name it however you want. There's been lots of talk inside of WordPress community, uh, more so probably over within the last year or two, uh, how do we name these things? And can we do it in a way that sort of is used by everybody? Uh, and, and while that in an ideal world would be awesome. Uh, the likelihood with hundreds and thousands of themes on the repository, people are just choosing their own names. So uh, we have chosen, at least in Frost, to use two words that are that make the most sense to us. Uh, because if you choose white as the name of the color, you're able to go in and edit that color inside of the site editor and you could change it to blue. But the CSS output, the CSS variable output would still say white and that's confusing. So in this case, we've basically established the base and contrast sort of nomenclature. So the base color is white, which is the background and everything like that. And the contrast color is obviously uh, what contrasts that. So that's generally the black that's found without. Uh, and in the case of Frost, we have, uh, there's actually a few more, but in the spirit of screen real estate, I only pick primary. You can define as many, as many colors as you want and name them as you see fit. Uh, Frost has primary and secondary. And then I think there's another one called neutral, which is like a light gray. Uh, and so what this does, when you define the color palette, that is what you see here under the theme. So we've got the white, the black, and you, as you hover over them, they even show. So you've got primary, secondary, and then neutral. Now, what's great about this is when you have patterns that are using um, these colors, the way that... Um, using that, like the CSS variables, like if you create a pattern and you say, I want this background color to be this primary color, if you change that primary color, anywhere that that's being used throughout the site will automatically change. Um, for instance, I will, let's just have some fun. So in this case, this is the Frostscape. This is the blueprint that I created for local. As you can see, it's using the, uh, the purple style variation. So every instance in here where there's purple, it's actually using the primary color scheme. And so if I go in and change the style variation, let's just say we want to go to green, it will then percolate throughout all of the uses. So you can just say, hey, I want to change it to this. Now, similarly, if you don't use a style variation and you just have like a color palette, you're also able to, and I might be jumping ahead of myself here, but you're also able to 
change. And these changes are made in the database, not the theme. So the theme sets the colors and then you can go in and change them. So for instance, even if this was a theme that didn't have a style variation at all, and this is just frost purple was just like the core, the color palette, you could go in and change that, right? You could say, okay, the brand needs this blue. And so therefore you can specify um, the, the colors inside of the, the, and then when you save this and let's just do that, we'll do that. So we're gonna save this. And we're gonna go back to the page that we were on. And you'll see now that that blue is now the available color. So if you want to, and you can change these colors, you can add more colors. If you have five more colors that you wanted to add, uh, I'll do a quick walkthrough and then I'll reset the color so that. So we're in here, the palette, let me just reset this back. Reset colors, which sets it back to the frost blue. Um, but for instance, if you wanted to say, okay, I want these colors, but I also want to add on a red color, you can do that and you can name it. And whatever you name it here is what's used in the CSS variable that gets output. Um, so red or whatever. And so you could just continue to keep adding different colors. Um, we'll do this, call it teal. Hit save. And then if you go back and edit that page, then those also will become available. Let's confirm. Yep. So these are the custom colors that you've set by way of the, um, the global styles. Jumping down. So let me reset some of this stuff so we can. As an example, I did this one time live on the Frost site and left it pink by accident. So uh, fun little story. Go into here, remove these colors. This is set. I need to go back to my style variations and set this back to teal. So we're back to square one. OK, uh, gradients. So these are theme gradients. And this is generally the code that's used to uh, establish the gradients in Frost. Um, in this case, I just have one gradient in the theme. It's basically taking the primary color and blending it into black. So it's purple to black, which is actually what you see in the background here. Um, and so I'm gonna go into my Taylor Swift post and I'm going to set, in this case, we're still using the, the teal from before, so that's why we've got teal. So, so what it does is it takes uh, the primary color and blends it to here. So whatever variation you have active, like if you switch this to pink, this then all of a sudden becomes pink to black. Uh, and so these are theme defined gradients that are available uh, right here. Uh, and then scrolling down into the code, this is really what it looks like. Uh, this is where you define the gradient um, the definition of the gradient. Uh, in this case, it's just basically saying we just want to go top to bottom. Like there's gradient tools out there where you can like do different things with gradients, um, like have three or four different colors and things like that. And they can move and switch at different uh, marks. Anyway, so that all gets set here and that's what's then used for the preview. And then last but not least, so here's an example again of that purple to black. Uh, and before I get onto Duotone, so gradients are cool because um, most of the blocks that exist now, and I just updated this not too long ago, um, I, I pulled this list from Carolina and Emarks, fullsiteediting.com. These are all of the blocks that support gradients. Um, so you can use gradients pretty much anywhere, pull quotes and you know, quotes and even in a separator, you could, if you had like a thicker separator and you wanted to make a little gradient um, from a design perspective, you could do that in buttons and columns and things like that. So there's a full list here. It's basically every block that's out there. Cause at this point, most blocks have most settings. Uh, I think that was like a 6.1, 6.2 um, rushes to get all of the blocks to support all of the, the settings that were available. Um, so last but not least, we have Duotone filters, which Depending on who you are, a lot of people have an opinions on why we have duo tone filters in general. Is it a gimmick? 
Uh, I think there are use cases, um, especially if you want to like make black and white images, but then upload whatever version you want. Uh, and so this is basically, as it's seen, you can just set the duotone filters, you define them, you can name them, and then you just provide the hex codes. Uh, and I'll use the Taylor Swift photo as an example. Uh, these are the three duotone filters that come with Frost. Uh, obviously, just a black and white. Oops. And this is sort of a thing. And you can you can play with it. Um, if you want to get super crazy, you can just change the colors and do things like that. Uh, we'll go on to style variations next. But uh, before we get there, I see a few more questions in the chat. Uh, let's see what we got here. OK, da, 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 da. Thank you, Damon, for that link. Oh, more Damon stuff. Uh, yeah, so important to note, uh, in style revisions, uh, like post and page revisions, are exactly what it is. It's basically a way to roll back changes that were made. And I believe even in style revisions, Damon, you can um, let me know otherwise. Uh, it tells you who changed what, right? So like if you do turn something over to a client and all of a sudden their site is pink and it's supposed to be blue, you could go back into the style revisions to see what happened, who did what, and at what point that happened. Um, so yes. Okay, Elisa, you're talking probably about the way you name colors. Um, and there are a lot of themes right now, even on the WordPress.org directory, when you pull them down, they're they're very... Understandably, like if you um, teal is the name of the color and it's a teal hex code, and that makes sense up until the point where, and maybe you could, maybe you've disabled the ability for them to do this, and then it doesn't make a bit of a difference. But um, if they change the color, you know what? Let's have some fun. Let's let me make sure all my core colors are enabled. Look at the because I have a feeling that what we'll see is going to be true. All right, so we're going to have a little bit of fun here. Uh, I'm going to go into here, and I'm going to change this color. I'm going to use a dark color, vivid purple. So, so this is now vivid purple. Uh, what I'm going to do is go to the front end, and we're going to inspect this. And so this paragraph has vivid purple color. Okay, and so over here, WordPress outputs um, so it outputs the class name, and then it says go fetch the variable, which when we come down here is WP preset color. That's standard nine B. Now, what I want to know is what happens. Oh, that's not part of the palette. Okay, so we're going to change this to lime green, okay? And this is sort of illustrating the point. Now, when you hover this, it still says vivid purple, yet it's now green. And so that then becomes very confusing, which is why, and I'll refresh my screen here, you now have a uh, green color or a paragraph that says has vivid purple color. So this is generally why I, as a person, prefer not to call things by color when you have the ability to then customize them to whatever, because most users don't understand what's going on. They don't understand what CSS variables are. They just see, hey, no code. I can change this color to this. And then behind the scenes, it gets a lot more complicated. So um, even using light and dark was was a tough one. Uh, I think, I can't remember what Frost used originally, but it was two words that were like, mm, what if they just flipped them? Then it was, light was dark and dark was light. And a lot of people would say, oh, we're going to set background color and we're going to call it background color. And then I think it was foreground and background. And then I'm like, so technically one could have a background color with a foreground, you know, uh, CSS variable. And so base and contrast was where, where I landed. I think it's generally now, um, Damon, can you, I think that's what core actually has settled as sort of like the default verbiage for like the, um, I think 2023 maybe also uses that. And so with that, we kind of said, okay, this is like becoming the standard or at least the standard by which some people want to adopt. And so, uh, yep. okay. Okay. So base and contrast and then primary, secondary, tertiary, quaternary, and then it goes all the way up to whatever um, 
some people do like color one, color two, color three, sort of a thing. It kind of doesn't matter. It's more, you know, six to one half dozen to another, but, um, all right. So, um, any other questions before I move on? I see a few more things. I want to make sure we don't miss anything. Okay, so style variations. These are different than child themes. So style variations um, are the ability. Let me go in here. So I'm going to go into here. So you can see I am now inside of on my, let's see if I can move. Oh, I can't move that. Make it bigger. Uh, I'm inside the Frost directory, and there's a, a folder here called Styles. So this is the parent Frost theme, so Styles. And if you open up the Styles, you see a bunch of JSON files. And sort of like a child theme, a style variation gives a builder or a user the ability to sort of tweak the skin, I guess, of their site. And so anything that exists in the style variation will, when active, override the parent's setting. In Frost, I've made it really, really simple. I'm going to open up the purple style variation. All I've done here is basically re-establish the color palette. So the blues become purple in this case. And then in a corresponding way, the duotone filters also sort of set the new purple color for each of those. Uh, you could have style variations that are different fonts, have different backgrounds, different spacing. Anything that's in theme JSON could be part of a style variation. Um, I'm trying to keep things simple. And so for, for Frost, style variations are really just changing of the color. Um, so we can see here, um, Frost has basically eight different style variations. Blue is the default. Uh, and so, you know, in this case, everything that's blue becomes gray, everything that's blue becomes green. So depending on whichever one that you want to um, go on. And this is really more for just users who just want to just change a color. Uh, this is probably less or unlikely uh, a feature that you want to use for client sites, because really you're just building custom. And so you wouldn't need a style variation. Uh, at that point, you just set inside of the main theme JSON, whatever the colors are for the client, and then just call it a day. Um, but And so I wouldn't call style variations a gimmick because I do think there's some functionality here that's cool. Um, but, and that is it.